Miss Marla David, Madonna Eroi Loech Sar, Binote Sheyar Bitseni, Alme Menuchot Yanachaleni, Nafshi Yishovet, Yanachini Vomaglet Sadek Lema Anshamo. Come, ki lech begit zal mavet. Lo irara ki hat haimadi. Shiftecha umishan tacha emayinach hamuni. Taroch lefanai shulchan. Neged Surirai Dishanta Vashamen Roshi Kosiri Vaya Achtov Chesed Yudifuni O Yamechayai Vishaviti Bevet Aronai Le Orech Yami I've chanted for you the words of the 23rd Psalm. As we seek comfort and strength, we often turn to the psalmist, and so I ask you now to recite these words with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we will remember her. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we will remember her. In the opening buds, and in the rebirth of spring, we will remember her. In the blueness of sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember her. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we will remember her. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we will remember her. When we are weary and in need of strength, we will remember her. And when we are lost and sick at heart, we will remember her. When we have joys we yearn to share, we will remember her. So long as we live, she too will live, for she is now a part of us as we remember Serene Shaper. To her sons, to Tom and Dave, also to Amy and Lorelei, to her brothers Herb and Edmund, and her sisters Rose and Elise, also to Joan, to the members of the family and so many cherished friends. We've come together today to remember, but also to celebrate the life of your beloved Serene. Our wise sages have taught us that birth is a beginning and death a destination, and life is a journey from childhood to maturity and from youth to age from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength or strength to weakness and often back again, from health to sickness and back we pray to health again, from offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, and grief to understanding, 
from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat, until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey, stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, and life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage to life everlasting. Serene's journey began here in Cleveland in 1931. She was the second youngest child of seven children, born to Adolf and Irene Golder. Serene was always close with her brothers and sisters, and she and her siblings, Herb, Edmund, Rose, and Elise, who are with us today, and also her brothers, Albert and Morton, both of blessed memory. They all enjoyed a happy childhood growing up in Cleveland's Collinwood Euclid Beach neighborhood on 174th Street. As Herbie told me, the only Jewish family in the area. Their father, Adolf, or Pudi as he was known, was a hardworking man who came to this country from Hungary basically with nothing. Pudi somehow managed to get himself through law school and then he started an electrical contracting and appliance business, Doan Electric. He was hardworking and successful. Serene attended Patrick Henry High School and she graduated from Shaker Heights High School. Throughout her childhood and teenage years, she enjoyed riding horses. And while Serene had a number of good friends, it seems that her closest friends were actually her siblings and her cousins who made up this very large extended family. I had a chance to speak with Herb for just a little bit. He described his sister to me as a woman who was always sweet, sincere, and conscientious, and that she was modest. Herb, you told me that, that she was a good student. At Shaker Heights High School, she was co-valedictorian. She also taught others horseback riding at the academy down the end of your street. You said she was a wonderful person and a person that you could always talk to about anything. And Rose, you described your sister as a very serious girl, a bright student, a bright girl. She had a quiet way about her unless she had something to say, and then she would, in fact, speak her mind. And following your sister's high school graduation, she went on to attend Cornell University. She completed her college, college education, however, here in Cleveland at Florence Mather. Serene worked diligently at her father's company, and through this experience, she became an expert on convertible preferred stocks. Sometime following her college career, Serene met and married Robert Shaper. And while this marriage ended in divorce, it brought forth two wonderful sons. In the years that came after the marriage ending, Serene and Robert always did share a closeness, a fondness for one another. And this was beautiful for their sons to see this friendship. She was described to me by her boys as disciplined, intelligent, and a woman with a good sense of humor. But her favorite comedian was always her brother, Albert. She'd like to watch laughing with her boys. And just a few years ago, she went to see the movie Little Miss Sunshine. She went with Dave and Amy. After the movie, Amy, you remarked to Dave that I could never have taken my mom to see that movie. But this was serene. She had a wide-ranging sense of humor. You also described your mom as cynical, but not pessimistic. Serene and her love of learning was an avid reader, and she actually enjoyed reading advertisements. She really liked reading those flyers, the little magazines from Trader Joe's, because as an English major, she was fascinated with copy. She herself actually wrote copy, we think for Higby's or the Old May Company, but she loved when things were cleverly written. She admired that. She was a woman, while not observant in her practicing of Judaism, she was a woman whose Judaism was always extremely important to her. And when she had the opportunity to travel, it was usually to see family. But she did manage to get a trip to Manitoba 
to watch the polar bears. And occasionally, your mom liked to maybe visit the casinos. She liked to play the slot machines. Ultimately, though, as Tom said it so beautifully, family was her love and her hobby. This is what was most important to her always. As our tradition teaches us these words, words which come from the heart, enter directly to the heart. It seems so appropriate at this time that we call on her sons to speak the words that are on their hearts today. First, I'd like to call on her son, Dave, to share with us. First of all, my mom probably wouldn't like this. While she loves a family and friends, uh, she never wanted to be the center of attention, and she is today, and she deserves to be. Um, as was mentioned, uh, my mom was born in 1931 in the midst of the uh, Great Depression, and last Friday, um, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500 were all hitting all-time highs. She passed Saturday, and the markets have declined afterwards. That's no coincidence. Um, I think in some ways the stock market, uh, not that she ever really cared about money, but the stock market is to some extent a metaphor for her life with the uh, highs and lows. Um, no matter what, she was sometimes cautious, but she was always invested. Invested in her life, invested in her family. Um, and she was always a fighter. Um, as I mentioned, she was born in the Great Depression. Her brothers, uh, Morton, Albert, and Edmund, all served in the Second World War. Uh, she helped raise her brother Herb, all while uh, you know excelling at Shaker, and then Cornell. Um, did I mention that she was the only one to let her at Shaker? Uh, you know, she always fought. She uh, you know lived with type one diabetes for half her life. Um, it never ruled her, but it was you know, something that was a part of her life. Um, that was a low. Um, undoubtedly, uh, the high in her life was her family, her parents, uh, six brothers and sisters. Um, I'd like to thank me and my brother and my father. Um, you know, she always fought. You know, near the end, Somebody said to me, you know, when she was rather ill, um, so she's just giving up. And I said, no, she's not giving up at all. She lived life on her own terms, and she uh, stayed in control of her life right to the end. And uh, I, I think we can all respect that. Um, she liked purple, my brother's shirt. Uh, she liked simple things, uh, dogs, her dog muffin, uh, flowers. Um, she could be quite introverted, but she loved spending time with her friends and family. And uh, she was unbelievably generous with all of us. Um, some may remember her as difficult, cynical, negative, and she could be, but uh, that, that's not all she was. I mean, woe to the person who made the mistake of paying her a compliment or in any way tried to lend her a hand, but uh, she always appreciated it. I mean, she could be difficult to see, understand where she was coming from, but she had an incredibly good heart. Um, she worked for years at Don Electric um, you know, and she loved working with her brother Edmund and her father, 
uh, Marvin Heiser and his sons, Robbie and Lenny. Um, following her retirement from Doan, she had a very brief stint with the Nova Scotia Ministry of Tourism, and then uh, she spent the remainder of her career, so to speak, uh, working uh, with her own portfolio and that of my brother and myself, um, and always did pretty well. Um, she didn't have a huge circle of friends, but the ones she had were lifelong, and um, I'm talking to Molly and Saul Ganuth, Judy and Harry Goodman. Uh, I'm probably leaving out some others, but um, you know who you are. Family was most important, Tom and myself, uh, my father Bob, with whom she spent uh, many good years, um, brothers and sisters, the many nieces and nephews out here, and of course, her dog Muffin. Um, in her last days, uh, you know, she was a very strong woman. You rarely saw her cry, but one thing that brought her to tears was uh, knowing that it was the last time she was going to see her brothers and sisters. Um, my greatest regret is not this. I mean, she lived a great life, a long life. Um, she had a stroke on July 29th and missed the party that we were planning for her on July 30th. And she'd been looking forward to that, uh, looking forward to seeing Tom and myself and all her brothers and sisters. Um, you know, I, I couldn't ask for much, but I wish she'd had one more day to enjoy that. Um, I, I know it hurt her, and um, that's life. But at any rate, I've probably talked too long. Um, I'd like to uh, thank the cantor, um, Berkowitz Cumin, uh, especially my brother Tom and my wife Amy. Um, I'd like to acknowledge some people that are not here today. Um, my father, Bob Shaper, um, my uncle Morton and his wife Claire, my uncle Albert and his wife Judy, my uncle Dovey, uh, husband of Elise, and their daughters Gail and Susie, um, my aunt Terry, uh, wife of my uncle Herb, and uh, my brothers, uh, my father's brother, Bill Shapiro, and his wife, Dee. Um, on a somewhat less morbid note, I'd like to thank some of the people who uh, have helped during this time. Uh, Eileen Goulder is welcome to clean my house whenever she'd like. Um, <laughs> Joe Cowan, Janet Kirschenbaum, Amy Johnson. I'm sure I've left some people out, but the help is much appreciated. Please don't be insulted if I've left you out. Um, I'd like to thank the staff and residents of Hamlet Hills Retirement Community where my mom spent roughly 10 years and probably some of the happiest years of her life. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank the staff of Hillcrest Hospital and Hospice of the Western Reserve who took uh, very good care of my mom in her final days. I'm not sure why, but my mom gave her attorney a letter dated December 20th of 1989 that uh, Tom and I didn't get till yesterday. And much of it's personal, it's very brief, but in closing she said, remember this Jewish lady for her Christian values of hard work, a passionate love for you and her family, and split pea soup. God, I love you guys, Mom. Well, we remember you for that and a whole lot more, and we love you too. Um, hopefully you can make it out to our house at uh, 6525 Chagrin River Road. Um, I guess traditionally that's a shiva. I don't want to look at it that way. It's uh, her birthday party delayed a couple weeks. I know she wished she could be there. Um, We've got uh, a shuttle at the corner of Chagrin River. We're asking people to park at the corner of Chagrin River Road and Solon Road. 
um, that's right up the street from us. We've got a great shuttle lined up. Um, if you need to drop somebody off at the house, if they got trouble walking or something, that's fine. Uh, we'll please park there. If you have any trouble uh, finding 6525 Chagrin River Road, as my mom would say, that's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Now we're going to ask Tom to come forward. Friends and family, I was going to write out a speech. I was going to do a script. And then I said, I'm just going to wing it because there's a political candidate out there that I like so much, and he's done such a nice job, and I see how well things go when you just wing something. <laughs> My advisors are telling me to stick to the script. <laughs> uh, Nick's the joke about the Second Amendment. Okay. Okay. Friends, family. Our family knows tragedy. We're not here for a tragedy today. There's sadness and there's happiness today. Um, 25 years ago, my glasses are going to go off and on about 10 times. 25 years ago, if you gave me the odds of winning the lottery or seeing my mom 25 years later, I'd tell you the odds of me winning the lottery are better, and I don't play the lottery. If you gave me my choice of whether I'd have my mom for 25 years or winning the lottery, I got what I wanted. There's no way in the world I can bitch about this. Am I allowed to say that word? I guess context is everything. Um, it is impossible to summarize my mom's life. My mom could have a one minute conversation with me that's gonna take me 20 years to figure out. And if I try and do this, we're going to be here longer than Methuselah lived. Right, guy? Okay. Okay. I want you to know something. My mom did not consider herself a pioneer. My mom did not consider herself a trailblazer. But put these things in context. She went to Cornell about 70 years ago when most women didn't go to college. She was a working woman. I picture my mom with at least one cigarette going, if not two, drinking coffee, reading the Wall Street Journal with a radio on that she wasn't even aware was on. And she loved to work, and she was very good at it. I grew up uh, playing music. And I grew, it was around the Vietnam War, and my, my friends had hair every direction. I had friends of every race. They'd come to my house, and I can't say my mom wasn't judgmental, because she was. She made sure everyone that I hung out with was nice and polite. Race never came up, money never came up, nothing came up. She just wanted me to hang out with nice people. And she was the best. My friends always felt welcome in my house. My brother alluded to it. My mom could be tough. When I was in second grade, my mom didn't quite have the brains to understand that I was going to be a professional baseball player. I knew it. There was a chance it wasn't going to happen because I might make it as a professional NBA player. I just hadn't decided yet. She thought school was important. She just didn't understand. So apparently I flunked a test. And in context, my dad was in Mount Sinai Hospital with a leaking appendix. And the odds of him getting out weren't that great. I didn't know that because in those days your parents lied to you about the health of what's going on. And I flunked this test. And I had a teacher who was tough and plain mean. She made me get this test signed by my mom. So I took it to my mom, which apparently was the last thing she needed to see, and she said, I'm not signing it. And I'd go to school the next day, and the teacher would say, where's the test? I said, my mom won't sign it. She said, you didn't show it to her. I said, I did show it to her. I don't know how many days this went on to, until my mom took a red pen and wrote on it, this paper is not worth signing, and initialed at SGS. I took it to my teacher, and she said, you have a good mom. 
I had no idea if I had a good mom or not. I just knew I don't want this ever to happen again, and, and I studied for at least two or three days. I'm not sure. Um, my mom was her own person, to say the least. Uh, some people have accused me of that, believe it or not. But let me tell you something. It's an amazing person who can be their own person when they take anywhere from three to five shots of insulin a day for 42 years. It's an amazing person who can stay independent when they basically lose their eyesight and they play the stock market and seeing the paper and seeing the ticker tape, whatever, well, you guys, the young people don't even know what ticker tape is, but the crawler or whatever. Um, my mom had an awful lot of health problems. I'm not even gonna begin to name names in here because there are too many people to thank, but a person who doesn't think I'm gonna call his name is here today, his name's Norman Siegel. One time I was in a coffee shop talking to somebody and Norman walked in. This is probably 20, 25 years ago and I said, I just had the biggest argument with my mom and he said, you're lucky. And everything registered and goes, bing. Um, I found my mom where people thought she was dead better than five times from insulin reactions, including paramedics. I did not take one day for granted with my mom that I am happy for every moment I spent with her. And I'm not going to tell you that all of them were pleasant because if I didn't know if my mom took her insulin or not and I asked her, I knew one way or the other I was going to get yelled at. And I knew it wasn't going to be fun and I wonder, is this worth it? And one day my mom looked at me and said, I want you to know I'm not fair to you. I know you do everything you can for me and I'm going to be unfair to you again, and I'm not happy about it. That made everything in my life from that point so much easier. My mom also said to me in the hospital, this is after I took over the pleasure of, of hosting Muffin at my house, which was a beautiful thing because if my mom and I got into some argument about nothing, I could call her up and say, I know you're not speaking to me, but I'm not going to deny you visitation to Muffin. I'm just going to bring him over. We don't have to talk. And we always talked, and we always worked it out. And I'm going to wrap it up, but I'm going to tell you there's a quote that has always intrigued me. It's by Charles de Gaulle. And here's what I know about Charles de Gaulle. One quote. It says, the cemeteries are filled with indispensable people. And what that means to me, my mom's indispensable. I can't go on without her. But everybody in here has lost somebody that's indispensable. And we all go on. And the reason we go on is because of the love in this room, the love we have for each other, the love and support we have. Let people know you love them. I feel the love in here. If you have somebody that you're having problems with or something, tell them you love them doesn't mean you accept every one of their viewpoints. It doesn't mean that you accept the, their point of view in an argument. What it means is those things are trivial. You don't ever know if you're going to see somebody. And I don't take anybody in this room for granted. And the, the support that you've shown my family is amazing. We're all family. And talking about family, when I grew up, I had to go to Friday night dinners. But I never knew I had to because I always wanted to. That starting Monday, it was, I wonder what's going to happen Friday night. What am I going to say to Joe? What am I going to say to Danny? What's Danny Goulder going to tell me? What, it was the greatest thing. My mom loved the Friday night dinners. My mom loved the 4th of July. My mom loved the temple picnics. And just let's never take for granted what we have. Let's understand this is a wonderful day. This is a tribute to my mom. I might lose it a couple times today, but just know I love everybody in this room. Thank you for supporting us. And I'm going to turn it over to Kathy, who has done just an absolutely amazing job. Um, Charles de Gaulle, also had a big nose. Um, I was remiss in uh, my acknowledgments. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the uh, husband of my Aunt Rose, uh, Melvin Sonny Rubin. Um, no offense intended, but uh, I wish he were here too. Um, that's it. Please go ahead. 
Thank you to both Dave and Tom. When I met with them yesterday, they were sharing that their mom had some favorite songs and were curious if we could incorporate one of those songs into today's service. Dave was almost certain that Serene's favorite song was the Helen Reddy hit, I Am Woman. Didn't really think that was going to be the right song <laughs> for this moment. But Tom remembered that uh, her absolute favorite musical moment, which happened more than once, was when Tom could play the guitar and his friend Rich Williams could sing, Rob Williams could sing the words of yesterday. So Rob is actually here, and we know Tom and his guitar are here. So Rob, if you would join us. It is so generous of Rob. Rob has been my brother for seven, eight years and has been there. My mom absolutely loved Rob. And Rob has been battling through a lot of stuff and I was so touched when he walked in that, ladies and gentlemen, this is a real pleasure for me. Yesterday, all my troubles seemed so far away. Now I'm ready to so clear to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday. Suddenly, I'm not half the man I used to be. There's a shadow hanging over me. Oh, I believe in yesterday. Why she had to go, I don't know. She wouldn't say. I said something's wrong and I know it's yesterday, yesterday. Love was such an easy game to play. Now I need a place to hide away. Oh, I believe in yesterday. That I believe in yesterday. Friends, at this time, we're going to ask all who are able to please rise for the memorial prayer, El Mole Rahamin. El Mole Rahamin, Shochein Bamromin, Am Semen Ochane Honata Hakan Verashina, Bemalot Kedoshimotorim, Kizo Hararakia Mazirim. Et nihishmati akirenu, shahalacha leona ma began eden, te hemenu hata. Ahna baharachami mastireha, besiter kinafacha leona mim, vititror bitorachayim et nishmata. Adonai huna halata vitanuach bishalom, an mishkava enomar. 
Amen. O merciful God who dwells on high, who is full of compassion, grant perfect rest beneath the shelter of your divine presence among the holy and pure who shine as the brightness of the firmament. To our dear departed serene shaper, who now has gone to her eternal home, may her soul be bound up in the bonds of eternal life and grant that her memory inspire us to noble and consecrated living. And to this we answer, Amen. We turn now to the words of the Mourner's Kaddish. And we recite together. Yitzgadal v'yitzgadash shemei rabah b'alma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute b'chayechon v'yomechon v'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael Bagala v'izman kari v'yimru Amen. Yehe shmei rabah mevarach le'olam olomei almaya Yit barach vi yishtabach vi yit pa'ar vi yit romam vi yit naseh vi yit hadar vi yit ale vi yit alal shmei tekudisha barichu le'ela min kol berchata bishirata tush bechata v'nechamata damiran bialma vimru amen yehe shalom araba min shemaya v'chaim aleinu v'al kol yisrael vimru amen. O se shalom bim romav, huya a se shalom, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'yamru, amen. We pray that God who makes peace in a high place, send peace and comfort to you the mourners, and to Israel, and to all humankind, amen. Friends, just to reiterate what Dave shared with you, the family will be receiving visitors at Dave and Amy's home at 6525 Chagrin River Road in Chagrin Falls. St. Martin's Church is located at the corner of Chagrin River Road and Solon Road, and there will be a shuttle bus to take you to and from the house. They will be accepting visitors following the service today until 9 p.m. this evening, and anyone who is wishing perhaps to make a contribution in memory of Serene, the family has suggested that you might consider the Hospice of the Western Reserve. On behalf of Tom and Dave, and please note, the dress is casual, very casual, as is the family, <laughs> which is a beautiful thing. But on behalf of Dave and Tom and all of Serene's beautiful siblings, we thank you for your love and support on this important day. <laughs> 